Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the Digital Summer Summit, a free upper elementary teacher conference. I would like to thank Jennifer and Diana for organizing this marvelous and awesome conference and giving me the opportunity to present to you today, Are You Engaging in Diverse Picture Book Instruction? Again, I'm Renita Perry from Teachable Resourceful Learners. So let's dive in of what we're going to talk about today. Hi, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm an educator. I'm an author. I'm from the Show Me State. I've taught second through fifth grade. I've been an administrative intern, school activities coordinator, and an after school director. Presently, I am teaching my favorite grade to teach in the whole wide world, which is fourth grade. I am a TPT product designer. I am the owner of Teachable Resourceful Learners, LLC, and I am a lover of chocolate, crab legs, strawberries, and anything pink. Let's get started. We are now getting ready to start talking about why do we need to use diverse books in our instruction. This infographic shows books that were published in 2018 from a study that was done at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. It gives you the percentages of books by race and it also gives you the number of books by race. So looking at this, you can see that there were not a lot of books published for minorities in 2018. That is why diverse books matter. When do you use diverse picture books? Do you use them during Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month, Women's History Month, or only on Multicultural Children's Book Day? If you're using them during those certain times of the year, that is good but I'm getting ready to show you how you can use diverse picture books throughout the entire school year. Why diverse picture books? Rudine Bishop wrote this quote, books are sometimes windows offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange, these windows are also sliding glass doors and readers have only to walk through in imagination to become part of whatever world has been created and recreated by the author. When lighting conditions are just right, however, a window can also be a mirror. Literature transforms human experience and reflects its back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. Reading then becomes a means of self-affirmation and readers often seek their mirrors in books. The How. Literature transforms human experience and reflects it back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. Reading then becomes a means of self-affirmation and readers often seek their mirrors in books. So the question is, are you engaging in diverse picture book instruction starting the first day of school. Here is a list of skills that can be used for instruction at the start of the new school year to informally assess your students' reading skills. These skills can be used with all the books presented in this session today. I suggest assessing more than one skill at a time per book. You can include comprehension questions, making connections, identifying themes, character traits, identifying the narrative elements, and vocabulary all in one book. 
by asking one question for each one just to get an understanding of where your students are when it comes to literacy skills. The first picture book we're going to start with is You Should Meet Katherine Johnson. Katherine Johnson was a mathematician who was featured in the movie Hidden Figures. Some activities you could do are write as many numbers as you can in one minute. How many addition number sentences can you solve in one minute? Create number sentences for 1,918. That was the year she was born. You can also match number words to standard form to expanded form for the numbers in her life, like the day she was born, the birth year, and the death year. You can also identify the text features in this book. The next one we have is Miss Mingo and the First Day of School. You can read the book and discuss the narrative elements complete a story map of the book, design a life cycle poster of the frog that is in the book, read the book and discuss the uniqueness of each animal. You can also research the weight of each animal in the book and create a chart showing the weight from least to greatest or greatest to least. For our kinesthetic learners, you can create one of Miss Mingo's students using Play-Doh and or paper to provide materials. This will be a good book to use on the first day of school. Balloons over Broadway. Grab how many students have been to a Macy's store. You can have the students write why your balloon or float should be in the parade. Create a balloon for the parade on a stick or draw on paper or a drawing app. Another activity is how many words can you make out of the words Balloons Over Broadway, which is the title of the book. You can also research the true story of the puppeteer of the Macy's Parade. And when they research, make sure they identify the source of where they got their information from. Ada Twist Scientists. Students identify the name of a scientist as an entrance slip in a complete sentence. By doing that, you're checking to see do they know the name of a scientist and can they write in a complete sentence again. These are activities that we are doing the first weeks of school. Students can do an experiment and write about the process. Students can develop questions about science they want to know the answer to. Again, this is Ada Twist Scientist. Scientist, scientists, what do you see? Students can watch a video on a scientist from the book and write down facts they want to remember. You Again, you could be checking their listening comprehension. Create a display of scientists' tools. Teach the scientific method. Research one of the scientists in the book and write facts about each one and have the students identify their source. Then the students can work in pairs and compare and contrast what their scientists have in common. City Green. You can identify natural resources in the book. Obtain a sunflower and dissect it and observe using hand lenses and draw what you see. The students can label the parts of a plant and discuss plants and what they need to survive. This is a good book to introduce science. In my state, science is assessed in the fifth grade and this will be a good way to review some science skills that might not be taught in your particular grade level to help them review science concepts if they test in fifth grade to get them ready for standardized testing. And the Doctor with an Eye for Eyes, the story of Dr. Patricia Bath. 
find facts on laser eye surgery, follow a recipe and make an Oreo eye or sugar cookie eye. Those ideas can be found on Pinterest. Create a timeline of her life, draw an eye and label the parts. You could also reach search her life and write a biography. Green Green, a community garden story. In this particular book, you could have the students make edible dirt following a recipe because you're checking to see can they read and they can they follow steps as they are reading, discuss photosynthesis, have students generate a list of vegetables, and then have them sort the vegetable by the parts that we eat. And you could also identify the verbs in the book and the nouns, and that is a way to get in parts of speech. Swift Walker, a journey around the ocean. On a map, label the oceans and color the water blue. On a world map, label the countries and continents features in the book. Compare two oceans using research, then write a comparison and contrast paragraph. Write the proper nouns, adjectives, and verbs in the book. Use evidence from the book and write about which ocean you would want to visit and why. This will be a great book to introduce social studies to your students and to review map skills and make sure they understand the oceans, the continents, and countries that you find on the continents. A chair for my mother. Activities that you can use for a chair for my mother at the beginning of the year include reading the book out loud to the students and use this book as an introduction to savings and economics. You can invite a banker to speak to the class virtually. You can research the different types of chairs and make sure the students list their source. You can also have students bring in coins. With those coins, they can write the year the coins were minted and they can put those years in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. They could take those years and round them to the nearest 10, hundreds, or thousand. They can do a simple STEM project, create a chair using the provided materials that you give them in your classroom or at home, or they can also create a container so they can start saving money. Another activity they might like or enjoy is to compare the price of a wing chair at Amazon, Ashley, Wayfair, or Macy's. That will give them the opportunity to research a real life piece of furniture that they use every day. So those are just some activities that they can do with the book, A Chair for My Mother. Tick tock, Banneger's clock. You can have the students research Benjamin Banneker. This would also be a good book to use to introduce government for Benjamin Banneker, lived in the Washington DC metro area growing up and he was also responsible for surveying the city and planning the city. You could also have the students talk about character traits, invite a musician to play the flute and the violin, or you could also have the students practice soap carving with ivy or dove and a plastic knife because in the book he uses wood to carve things. Ruth and the Green Book. Activities you could do for the book include find out how far Chicago is from your hometown, write that number in expanded, word, and standard form, and you could use base 10 blocks to model that number. Find out how much a bus ticket is to Chicago from your hometown and show three ways to pay for the fare. Show ways to get 75 cents, 
show ways to get the number 1,952 in three different ways. Research what was a green book and its purpose. There is a movie out, the green book, show parts of the movie so they can get an idea of what it was like to travel with a green book. The Princess and the Pea. This version is based on the continent of Africa where the author spent some time there. You could locate Africa on a map Bring in a pea in a pot so students can see a pea in a pot. How many words can you make out of the title, The Princess and the Pea? Again, we're doing these activities at the beginning of the year and we want to find out as much information as we can about our students academically. So trying to make words is a good idea to see what is their spelling like. Take it up a notch have them write sentences using some of the words that they made. Again, these activities can be used if you are in brick and mortar or if you are teaching virtually. The Word Collector. I will use the book, The Word Collector, at the beginning of the year to introduce vocabulary or word work. In the book, the character Jerome wrote his words on yellow paper. You can have the students read the book before your first word work or vocabulary lesson. You can sort the words in the book on yellow paper. You can create your own word book journal using yellow copy paper or construction paper. You can also have students browse through books and magazines for unfamiliar words and write them down and use dictionary.com for definitions and pronunciations. You can also have them keep a word journal at the beginning of the year and have them write words in there from the content areas that they are studying for this particular school year. And that's using the word collector by Peter H. Reynolds. Bessie Coleman was a famous aviator. I've used two books for Bessie Coleman. One could be used for point of view and perspective because it is different people telling about Bessie Coleman. Bessie Coleman, trailblazing pilot, is a rookie biography from scholastic and it just gives basic information about her in the book. While reading, you could identify the text features. You could read the book and write three to five facts learned about her. Then put those facts in a paragraph or create a poster in small group. Or they also can create a Google slide presentation, a Prezi or a PowerPoint presentation. Write the numbers used in the book and put the numbers in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. You can also have a paper airplane flying contest. Then determine how far it traveled by measuring. Figure out why some airplanes went further than others. And this will be a great activity to go outside with the students, of course, while they practice social distancing. So you could have one person fly their plane at one time and measure that, then the next person and the third person. Because in doing some of these activities that require students to work in pairs or group, we want them to stay safe and practice social distancing. Sophie Valdez, Future Press. This book, we can complete a story map they can identify the theme and the genre. Students can take a walk to the park and think about ways you can make the park better. Write a summary of the book. This is a great book to begin a discussion of civic duty and what it takes to bring the community together to do something good. 
make it applicable to the students. Take a walk in your neighborhood. See what ideas you can come up with to help your community be a better place. Shine loves sharks. Compare two types of sharks, such as a hammerhead and bull shark. Then write a comparison paper on the two sharks. Research and write five facts on sharks or create a presentation. Design a habitat for shark and or a diver's cave. Take a virtual field trip to the National Aquarium in Baltimore because they do have sharks there on the bottom floor. You can find the measurements of sharks and convert them. Last, consider going outside and draw lines of length on playground or the hall floor. You can also have students come up with the list of the different kind of sharks they are in the world. Grandfather's Journey. You can have the students write a summary of the book. This is a great book to begin a discussion on why people immigrated to the United States. Provide sentence strips and invite students to show grandfather's journey on a timeline. You could also have them identify where did grandfather come from and find out how many miles it is from his hometown until when he arrived in California. The name Jor. You can have students write how did they feel on the first day of school. You can have them locate Korea on a map. You can discuss the character traits of the main character and her best friend. You could discuss how was she treated? You could also have them make the recipe that is featured in the book. So you can see if they can read a recipe and follow directions, that might be a good activity to do at home because it requires some cooking. Students can write words on sticky notes that tell why they are special and you could turn that into an anchor chart. In the middle of the anchor chart, you could put a name jar. So those are just some activities you can do with the name jar. Thank you for your attendance today. It was a pleasure sharing with you how to use diverse picture books in your instruction during the first weeks of school. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and you have some ideas of some diverse picture books that you can use in your classroom as you begin the 2021 school year, whether you will be in brick and mortar or you will be virtually or you might be both. Again, I am Renita Perry from Teachable Resourceful Learners. I would like to say thank you very much for joining me today. How you can reach me? You can reach me by email, website, you can like us on Facebook, Instagram, or my YouTube channel. Thank you for attending this session today. I hope you have a lot of great new ideas that you can implement in the upcoming school year. I want everyone to have an enjoyable summer and better yet, I want you to have a great upcoming school year. Thank you again.